So we've already discussed this briefly, but let's take a moment to look at a very practical way to approach politics kingdom down. And let's do it by looking at the way Jesus did it, which is usually the best idea. So in Mark 12, verses 13 through 17, it says, They sent to him some of the Pharisees and some of the Herodians to trap him in his talk. And they came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are true and you don't care about anyone's opinion, for you're not swayed by appearances, but truly teach the way of God. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why put me to the test? Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. And they brought one and he said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? And they said to him, Well, that's Caesar's. Jesus said to them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. This is so beautiful, a perfect kingdom down approach given to us by Jesus. So first, let's just look at what a denarius is. If Jesus said, let me look at it, then we should probably look at it. So why did he ask for one to look at? Well, much like our coins where we have the image of a president and the inscription, in God we trust, they had an image and an inscription too. On the denarius was the image of Caesar and the inscription that said, Tiberius Caesar Augustus, son of divine Augustus. The inscription literally meant, y'all, I am king, son of God. Tiberius was saying, yep, in God we trust, and that God is me. <laughs> this is a claim to ultimate authority. This is totalitarian reign. Up until the time of Jesus, all governments were totalitarian governments. They called for total allegiance. The state and the temples mutually supported each other. There was no idea of limited states or space given for human rights or allowances given for political protest. Caesar was king, son of God. You better treat him as such. And here's the actual son of God, Jesus, still somehow saying, yeah, his picture's on there. Give him his money. This aligns with what Paul encouraged the church in Rome to do, living under that same invading and oppressive authority. Romans 13 verses 1 and 6 through 7 says, let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. For because of this you also pay taxes, for the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. In short, Submit to the local authorities for their image is the means of being able to function day to day. But Jesus, he continues, doesn't he? He says, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. Jesus and his brilliance as a teacher and leader is showing us how to live in this tension of exilic living. We know how to engage with politics without being consumed by it because here's the thing. Caesar's image may be on the coin, but God's image is on us. Give the government their money, but give your ultimate allegiance to God. Pay your taxes, please, but don't give over your soul. Do not allow any political power to have totalitarian claims over your life. When we learn how to live handing over the things that are Caesar's over to Caesar without handing over ourselves, this is where we can engage in politics like a true citizen of heaven. So before we even move on into the how of this, I just want to ask us, if someone were to look at our lives from the outside in, would they see more the image of a Republican or Democrat? Or would they see the image of Christ? Would they see someone who has given themselves fully to Christ or someone who has given themselves over to politics? Yes, we hand over what belongs to the government, but we always ensure that we do not bear their image. Now, practically, how do we do that? And I'm gonna be as practical as possible with a little acronym on my handy dandy blackboard back here. I love using these, I always feel just so like, just a teacher, God bless teachers. Okay, so how to do this practically, we're gonna use the acronym P. R-A-Y. 
pray. The first letter is P. We're going to pause. Pause. Pause and listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit. Before you post, before you vote, before you join in on that conversation at work, whatever, pause and listen. The Spirit operates in space. Let's give it to Him. He can do a lot with a little. R, we're going to root. Root ourselves in God's Word. Like we already talked about, politics can take such a Christian shine to them. It's easy for a candidate or a party to slap a scriptural slogan on their campaign, and we have to know God's Word in order to ensure we are not obeying mirror images of it, cheap reflections of that 14 karat gold dipped Christianized campaign. Root yourself in God's word. And then we're going to move to the A, which is ask. Ask for the input of godly community and pastors. And by this, I mean people who vote like you and people who don't. We have to let people who also love God confront our political opinions. We have to get uncomfortable. We have to engage in conversations with people who will call us out and call us up if we are participating in politics in such a way that we're bearing the image of Caesar and not of Christ. And then the last letter, we're going to yield. We're going to yield to conviction and not opinion. Now, there are many nuances to conviction, but for this specific study, we're going to define it as the state of being convinced or a fixed or strong belief. And in order to be convinced of something, the steps before this must be taken. Pausing for prayer, rooting ourselves in God's word, asking for input, then we yield. And the reason I wrote it like this is because this process needs to be seen more like a circle than just a, lip, a list of steps. It's so easy for us to become convinced that our opinions are spirit-led convictions. We stay in the process of P-R-A-Y, election after election, conversation after conversation, political leader after political leader, that we may continually bear the image of Christ in the land of Babylon. Hey, saints, this current political climate needs us and above all it needs us to pray.